We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, well, Austin's in the chat helping me out by um, basically scripting it for me in real time, apparently. He, he got our 3 two, one clap, which unless you're in the Discord server, you don't know what that is because we cut that out of the actual episode. Uh, and then, then he started in with my intro. Yeah, I know, because I'm a mess. Any any help you guys can give me is is for the best. Teleprompter information. <laughs> He'd have to get a lot faster to do that. A lot faster. All right. All right. We're All right so, uh, I'll just, uh, we're going to do uh, big recruiting both uh, last week and this weekend. So we're going to uh, do a mock class today and then look out for our Wednesday episode where uh, we're going to be talking about a bogus, crazy, uh, ridiculous national title claims uh, throughout college football history. So that'll be this Wednesday. But for right now, recruiting episode. What are we doing today, Kyle? Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, actually going to do our June mock. It's, it's, June been, mock. it's been a good... It's been a good minute since we've um, done our um, mock draft for the 2023 class. And what better way to update it than, uh, than the, the three latest booms that we had yes, this yes. last week. We, we, had a, we had a trio of wide receivers and back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back days commit. And yes, that was on purpose, in case those were asking. I, I, was anyone asking? I, I mean, like, I think we knew, right? Was was there any mystery to that? Like, I don't think that happens. I don't think that happens by accident. Well, I mean, I mean, there's there's a good amount of people that aren't on social media that they just see, oh wow, wide receiver, oh a second one and a third one without without really knowing. So yeah, there, there, there's can you there's, okay, but if it's two, you can be like, okay, coincidence, or but when it's three. I mean, like, I mean, just assume, right? Just assume? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so these three players, uh, Tate, Ennis, and Rogers, all coming to Ohio State, I guess it's for the 2023 class. And this is, these are some big, big names. These aren't just like no. players that are just, that are highly ranked and all that. Like you got Welcome all three of them per the 24 seven, uh, 24 seven sports composite. All three of them are top 10 receivers. Uh, number two, number three and number nine to be precise. Um, two of them, five stars. The third is a four star. He, he by the way, is ranked number 50 overall. The worst wide receiver, and I and I say worst with uh with air quotes. The the worst wide receiver here uh, is number fifty overall in the country per the per per the composite. Man, huh? is <laughs> Austin says is Hartline's losing his touch. He he's going after four star receivers. <laughs> Can't get the number one guy, huh, Heartline? <laughs> Fire Heartline, you guys. Fire Heartline. <laughs> Come on now. So that is 13 receivers now, or receivers, <laughs> 13 recruits <laughs> yeah. for the uh, 20... Four, four receivers. Last year. <laughs> four <laughs> yeah. receivers in total. Yeah, I can't, can't forget about... Uh, can't forget about... Um, uh, Bryson Rogers. Oh, not, I'm sorry. Yeah, Bryson Rogers as well, who committed. Um, it seems like forever ago. It, it was just yeah, a couple of the, months ago, but it seems it was, like forever ago. Was it April? <laughs> yeah, it was mid April. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Heartline equals overrated suck bag. Uh, I, I know of at least one former Ohio State coach who thinks so and uh, is definitely not at all jealous because the wide receiver room became a thousand times better after he was fired. Yeah. 
<laughs> is it Zach Smith? Wow. Right between the lines on that one, Austin. Good job. All right. Where do you want to start here, Jared? Uh, we, like I said, we have 13, 13 already committed. Yep. We, ha- we have four, four wide receivers tied in running back three offensive linemen, a defensive lineman and three secondaries, two safeties in one corner to be uh, precise, but those can always change. But where do you want to start? Where would you like so, to start? Let me start here. Cause I feel like this might be the, so, so I am, I am mocking out a 25 person class. So let me just say that. Uh, so you say 13, which means I, I need 12 more. Right. And one of the areas and, and, you know, this isn't new and yes, I know there's a new offensive line coach, but th- these cycles last more than a few months. Um, we already finished with the receiver, Stuart. I don't think they're adding a fifth. I think we're done here. Um, the, so yeah, I think they're done. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Offensive line. So yeah. Um, don't let's not throw the panic switch on like offensive line recruiting, not getting better yet. Again, these cycles last longer than the spring. Right. But <laughs> it's time to finish this. Yes. Yes. Spelled with two N's, Zach, and and for good reason. Uh, I am going to add one additional member to the Ohio State offensive line recruiting class. Um, And yes, that will, at least according to my mock, finish it. (sighs) I I do think they need another offensive tackle. I, I just don't know who that person is right now. Yeah, absolutely, they do. You only, uh, you only have one. Must be an Ohio yeah. reach. Are you talking about the fifth guy or our Finnish friend who is from Finland? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, yeah. So that, his name be, is Olaf. Needing... Sorry, you go ahead. I was going to say Ohio, Ohio State really needing some some depth in the um, offensive line because I mean what we're seeing this year about the depth. I mean, Ohio State overall, I think is fine, but if you get one or two players injured on that offensive line, we gotta we gotta build build that uh, depth back up again. So, so let's let's start with that offensive lineman, if you don't if you don't mind, Jared. Who who, who do you have that could um, be committed here for Ohio State as part of the June mock draft? I'm gonna mess up his last name because this is the sloop cast, and that's what we do here. Olas Alinen, maybe. Uh, he is in uh, he is in Connecticut right now. How do you spell it? Uh, A L I N E N. So it's oh, there you go. That's how. And it is Finnish. A uh, line in a line n. I, I was close. A line n. So yeah, the. Uh, <laughs> we need Jared to spell more words on air. Yeah, probably. Um, I, again, I really want Ohio State to add another tackle here a lot. Like this would put the offensive line recruiting class in 2023 at 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 four. It needs to be five, and I really need it to be another tackle. Um, I, I just don't know who that guy is right now. There's not another offensive tackle out there. Jordan Hall, maybe, um, I think that's one of potentially, um, yeah, he is big. Um, and like the kid they picked up from St. Clairsville, like he's big, um, you know, but Hall is a, he's not, he's not a kid from St. Clairsville. The kid plays at IMG Academy, um, or no, I'm sorry. That's that's not right. Um. Yeah. No. I. No. No. Yeah. Well, anyway. Um. That 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 Jordan Hall I'm thinking of is from. Um, or he's a he's a linebacker. Anyway. 
Uh, no, he so, well, so unless with, he with, went anyway. It doesn't. Fight. We're moving so with on. The, so with, we have this a big class so with this offensive lineman here, uh, a lot of the experts are predicting him to go to Alabama. But on your projection here, Jared. Yep, you have yep. him pretty high. You have him as a <coughs> have him as an a uh, eight that he'll come to Ohio State. So what's what is it that you're seeing? Uh, it's not what I'm seeing. All, honestly, I had him as a Bama kid too. This was me checking up on uh, what what Alex Gleitman was hearing and saying and thinking. Um, he kind of swayed me on it. Um, so you know, f- uh, former guest host of the podcast friend of the podcast alex gleitman uh feeling good about it so um honestly i just needed uh ohio state needs offensive linemen it makes sense that they would go full court press on on this kid he's enormous he's talented maybe a bit rough around the edge but i don't think they need him to start right away and again they just they need offensive tackles just needs offensive tackles so i think this is I think the the most likely offensive tackle out there that's available, um, gotcha, or that is a realistic option. Okay. All right. Uh, I think it's safe to say with four wide receivers, Ohio State's not going to go after any any wide receivers. Uh, no. One tight end is usually what Ohio State goes after a year, so I don't think they're going to go after any other any other tight end. So let's let's talk about who they could. Let's talk about the but... quarterback then. Um, I know we, we talked about it in months ago about it is Ohio State going to take a quarterback in this, in this recruiting class here. Um, who's the committed tight end? Uh, that's Ty Lockwood, the uh, kid out yeah. of Tennessee. Uh, we talked about, is, is there going to be a quarterback from this class? Is, uh, has Ohio yeah. State come in too late to get somebody here? Do you see any? Do you see anybody, Jared? Here, that's that's left on the on the table. Yeah, um, there's a, a a couple quarterbacks out there um, that that Ohio State is is working with. Um, we talked about Dylan Longren uh, a few weeks ago. He's uh, the kid who's currently committed to Baylor, but he's still. Um, well, yeah, probably not Jaden Davis. Um, uh, longer in, uh, out there, he is the, uh, kid who was already committed to Baylor and it was looking real good. I put him in a thumbnail a, a little while ago. Um, it was looking real good. Like maybe he's coming to Ohio state, but he just picked up a Texas A&M offer, which apparently is like dream school territory for him. So, uh, that may have yeah he is a texas kid that may have thrown a a wrench or uh no he's a georgia kid actually well i mean he's in georgia now anyway um i have no idea where he's originally from uh you you have uh malachi singleton still out there um I, i don't think that's a complete impossibility but the uh the quarterback i'm going with is a uh, quarterback by the name of Brock Glenn. Um, again, I, I, this is, I have a confidence. I keep a spreadsheet and I have, uh, I, I have confidence scores next to all these guys. Um, every single player in this mock, I have at least a confidence score of seven on with the exception of Brock Glenn, who I have a five. I, I really just don't know what Ohio State's doing at quarterback in, in 2023. You, you recruit one of the best quarterbacks in 2021, 2022, 2024. It, the Ohio State's having. Oh, I said Longren and it's. Yeah. the Yeah. I, my, my apologies. Yes. Uh, Nova. Sorry, he's the kid that's from from Baylor, Novacat. Yeah, that that's my mistake. Um, Lundgren is uh, a different kid who Ohio State was feeling really good about. Okay, I'm I'm getting there now. Lundgren uh, is another kid Ohio State is feeling really good about, but he, it looks like he's going to South Carolina. Um, 
I, I don't know if Longgren had. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. The, the quarterback situation is sketchy with Ohio State right now for the reason I already said. They have too many, too many damn quarterbacks in the room. No shout out for calling you out. Stuart, thank you for, for the assist on that one. I appreciate it. Um, the, uh, I, was, I was getting my quarterbacks mixed up. It's just sort of like quarterback in. What? No, maybe not for Ohio State. Okay, quarterback out. Quarterback in. Okay, maybe not for Ohio State. Quarterback back out. <laughs> sort of, once, once I sort of get it in my head that they're not coming to Ohio State, uh, I tend to flush the, the, the information from my head. But... Yeah, so if that tells you anything, the fact that I'm getting those two mixed up is the fact that I don't think that Ohio State is uh, in on those kids anymore. Uh, the Yeah, one's going to Texas A&M. I think the other one's going to South Carolina. Um, again, I'm not really worried about any of this Be for the same. And Ohio State does need a body, don't get me wrong. They might need to end up going transfer portal here. I'm not sure, but they aren't going to be getting a prominent quarterback this class. They just aren't. And so whoever you end up getting is whoever you probably end up getting. But it's 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 just tough with so many talented guys already in the room, including the 2024 guy who is, you know, one, one, one in his class. It's just tough. It's tough to get someone to come in between. Is Jagger still available? No, but what you need is someone who has moves like Jagger. I hate myself for that joke. I apologize. We're, we're going to move on, Jared. We're, yeah, Please. exactly. We're, we're, we're just, I'm going to pretend. pretend Please, that yeah. you, yeah, just, 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 just keep going. All right. Uh, some, some rumblings that happened a few weeks ago here and some, seems some good news for Ohio State this weekend. Um, talk about uh, Darren Reed. Um, yeah, yeah. A couple of week, couple of weeks ago, there was a big crystal ball that was having him go to LSU. Got a lot of got a lot of people worried about where Reed was with Ohio State. Is he thinking about going to LSU now? But seems this weekend there's some reassurance that he. Ohio State is looking really good to to get him to come to to Columbus here, but man, that's that's definitely one you got to really keep an eye out for. Uh, so Darren Reed it's, is a defensive lineman out of uh, Georgia. He's a really really talented kid, and I I think from what the composite has him, which is about 228th nationally, I think he's higher. I think he's higher than that. Yeah, yeah that's an under rank right now. Um, yeah, and it's not it's not often I will uh I will say this kid's coming to Ohio State, which is what I'm doing right now. It's not often I do that when there's a Will Fong crystal ball disagreeing with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that's a rare move for me. I, I I will not go against the Will Fong bong all all that often at all. all almost never. But um I I I feel like Watch, let's everyone, let's watch, let's watch Will Fong on 24 7 and see if that crystal ball gets uh, moved. Uh, I, I think once we see that, I'm just going to say, um, yeah, uh, you know what? Gangland summed, summed it up really nicely here. He says, it's us or LSU at this point, and LSU does not feel confident. I, I think that's a excellent way of summing that up. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, so if we want to stick with the defensive line here, uh, another name that you have here. Um, some people will know the last name here. Uh, yep. <laughs> um, Mateo Uyunglele. Yes. There you go. Kyle, Kyle was stalling on that one. I thought I'd throw in the assist. <laughs> yeah. Defensive end. Yes. He's his little brother. Um, I've had, I've had Ohio State. I've had, I've had Mateo Uliangalale in the um, Ohio State mock for a few mocks now, and I'm not backing off of it yet. Um, I feel very good about this one. I won't say I feel great about this one. I think Ohio State does have some good options at defensive end should this fall through. Um, but um, 
I'm I, I feel very good about this. Um, it's not 100 percent, but I feel good. All right. Uh, I think that's it from the defensive line here. So that's a total of so far. One, two, three. Oh, no, I'm missing one. Sorry, I'm missing one here. Uh, John Walker. There you John go. Walker here. Um, kid out of uh, Florida. Uh, you have him, Jared, as a uh, as a seven on your uh, on your uh, probability score. Yeah, yeah. Um, big kid, uh, nose tackle like body. Um, so I, I think you see that you definitely see him as like a one tech defensive tackle. Whereas, you know, maybe you see Reed potentially three or one. We see Walker absolutely as a nose tackle here. Um, and I like Ohio State's chances here. Uh, I do think they have other options. Should this not work out? I think they have some good defensive linemen who they have really good relationships with. Uh, so I think Ohio State has options otherwise, but I think that Walker is um, one of their best case scenarios, best case realistic scenarios uh, for nose tackle right now. Yeah, and he and he's just within the top hundred in the composite rankings. Uh, so if we move back a step here, linebackers. I think Ohio State and in the past couple of years has done better recruiting on the linebackers here. Uh, so far, Ohio State doesn't have anybody in this class here. Who, who do we got? Well, I just want to say real quick that they do have some safeties who will probably be up and playing like that bullet type position. So yeah. sort of um, still, still mad about the Sean McCullough. Me too. Uh, the, that being said, I do think they have some good linebackers potentially in the recruiting class. Still, I would say both best case and most likely are, are, uh, well, let's just say, let's start with, uh, Tackett Curtis. I feel very good about Tackett Curtis. Uh, he is a, uh, a kid from Louisiana. The, the name of the high school is many which is weird, but there it is. Um, I, I think uh, pencil him in already. You can go ahead and pencil him in now. I, I feel very, very good about Tackett Curtis. Um, I expected to see him commit to Ohio State when it's all said and done. Feel very, very good there, uh, both from a likelihood standpoint and about Tackett Curtis as a player. Uh, I think this is a huge win for Ohio State. Um, I don't feel as good about Troy Bowles. I feel okay about Troy Bowles. But so th this this might be a little bit more me saying best case scenario as opposed to most likely here. Um, but the chances are OK. They're OK. I, he, he did come and visit this past weekend. We don't necessarily know as we're recording this on a Sunday, all the details of that visit yet. So. Honestly, if we were recording this a week from now or even on Wednesday, that may have pushed me one way or the other, whether to include him in this, either to say he confidently he belongs in this mock or to say, no, he probably shouldn't have been in this mock. Um, but we, we don't necessarily have that information yet. So uh, but but for right now, we're going to put Troy Bowles in in the uh, in the class. So that would be two. Uh, excuse me. Uh Kyle, there's a third linebacker in the in this class. Before before you say that, uh, go with a Buckeye insider, um, uh, Kerlick. Yeah, he'd say if he if he had to pick right now for uh, for Bulls, he said he he'd probably pick Georgia at this point. That's uh, not good news. But like I said, it's you know. He that doesn't sound. Did, did he say that tonight? Today? Yes, today. Ah, damn. That's not that's not great news. But uh, I do have a third linebacker in this class. Uh, he is last name Reese. He is out of Cleveland. Uh, he is a linebacker. Uh, I wonder at this point if if um. His, his scholarship is actionable. 
I wonder if Ohio State is uh, waiting and seeing as far as like, okay, if Bowles does go to Georgia, do they then call up Reese and say, all right, your your scholarship is officially an actionable offer now. Are you in? Uh, but I don't, that's that's me speculating. I don't know this. Just, just so we're clear, I don't know this. That's, that's pure speculation on my part. Um, I think Reese would be in a great addition to this class. Ohio State has uh, sort of recommitted themselves to the state of Ohio, picking up a bunch of very talented Ohio kids early on in this recruiting class. I think Reese would fit in great with them. Yep. All right. Um, so you mentioned you mentioned uh, some safeties moving up to linebacker earlier. Um, so we'll go with the safeties. Ohio State, Ohio State already has two safeties, uh, Hartford and Hawkins, already here. Do you have anybody else lined up in your in your mock draft? I do. Uh, Jaden Bonsu. Uh, I'm probably messing that up. Uh, he is a talented safety from New Jersey. Um, might be a tad on the bigger side. Might be one of those guys who's like up in that bullet esque position. So so keep an eye on that. Um, and the other one would be an absolutely enormous win if Ohio State is able to pull it off, um, which I think is possible. I'm not going to say likely. I'm going to say possible. Uh, Caleb Downs, who is the number 11 overall player in the country and the number one safety and the number one player in the entire state of Georgia, which is saying a lot. Um, this would be an, an, an enormous win, an absolutely enormous win for Ohio State. Uh, to go into Georgia, get the absolute best player in the country, the off season after Georgia wins the national title, and it's see you, Stuart, and it's possible. Yeah, I mean, he he just yeah, Caleb just got his. Uh, I'm I'm sure it's probably his final four here before he makes his um final decisions here. He he just visited Ohio State just this weekend. And then Alabama the weekend before that, then Notre Dame, and then Georgia. So visiting all four of these colleges in the month of June. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, like I said, it would be absolutely enormous for Ohio State if they pull this off. And it's it's possible. It's very, very possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be huge, 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 huge. All right, Kyle, let's, uh, let's clean up the defensive backs. And let's talk about Jermaine Matthews. Uh, he is the final member of the defensive back class that I'll be adding uh, to this mock. The uh, technically listed as an athlete on 24 set. He's a corner. I just let's let's just I don't know what 24 seven's doing as far as not naming him a corner yet. He's a corner. Um, it's uh, he is he's uh, announcing his commitment soon. Um, and he is like, I don't know if I said this yet, he's from Cincinnati, um, from Winton Woods. And, um, the, the one thing that might be throwing a tad bit of a monkey wrench in this is the fact that he did just receive a late offer from Alabama commitment this upcoming week. Right. Yeah. Um, that's the plan. I would be very interested to see. I just want, want to keep an eye on that want to make sure that still happens. Um, you get that late Bama. It's, it's only because it's Bama. My only hesitation here is that it's because it's Bama because it's Bama. Now this also might be Bama just like gaming the system a bit, right? Like here's this kid. He's between Ohio state and Cincinnati. Everyone knows where that's going. 99% of the time. And Bama is just, you know, like, Deal with this real quick. Like they're just sort of gaming a bit. I don't know. Um, but we'll we'll see. Um he's currently ranked 373, which is ridiculous. Uh he, he's an absolutely talented player. Uh maybe if 247 would get off their butt and actually mark him as a corner and evaluate him as a corner, then uh that might improve his rating a tad. Um, but uh I, I think an imminent ad for Ohio State. Uh, I always do this when we do a mock. I always do this. If I had to pick not who's most likely to join, 
but instead who's next to join and uh matthews is my who's next fair enough you have right, one more is on that here. uh i see you have one more on here unless uh, oh apologize unless you talked about them early um nope Kay i messed lee. that up yeah k and lee um i i don't know why i said the other kid was gonna be the last defensive back that that was wrong uh, Lee is from Cedar Grove, Georgia. That's how I say it's going after Georgia hard this year. Um, and it's probably between Ohio State and Georgia at this point. Um, I, I don't see this one ending anytime soon. This could go for a while. Again, this is another kid who just visited Ohio State last weekend. So, you know, like Bowles and like a lot of these guys, because this was a huge, huge recruiting weekend for Ohio State. What we hear in the next few days could be huge. This is actually a terrible time to do a mock. Yeah, if I'm being if I'm being real sincere with everyone, this is a terrible time to do a mock because, like, where Ohio State stands with a bunch of these kids could absolutely change uh, just this week. Um, where Ohio State thinks they stand with the kids anyway. So yeah, but. When it comes to Ohio State, if you can get the kid on campus and you can get him to visit, that's always a huge part of the battle. Um, but yeah, that just that just sort of is what it is. The other thing, and if we're going to talk about corners real quick, one of the other things you may be keeping an eye out on, and this at this point in time feels very, very, very unlikely. Um, keep an eye out on Kermani McLean. Um, he is a cornerback who is, um, not, um, I want to say this. He wasn't committed, but man, everyone just had him penciled into Florida for a while now. You know what I mean? Like it was just a, yeah, he's going to Florida. Yeah. He's going to Florida. And by the way, he's the third best player in the country. Number one corner in the country. Mm hmm. So, and again, I, I really want to edge this, like hedge this, the <laughs> absolute stud just need to get him on campus. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Gangland. Um, again, he was, he's been like a shoe in for Florida for a long time. And one of the reasons why I even include Ohio state in this conversation, because Ohio state really hasn't been in this conversation at all is because he plays on the South Florida express as do many current Buckeyes or many current Buckeyes in this recruiting class, including a couple of those wide receivers, um, including Dijon Johnson. Like there's a lot of Ohio state influence around him on his South Florida express team. And like maybe, but, but as, as gangland said, you just, you gotta get, if you, get, if you can get him on campus, if you can get him on campus, look out because Ohio state would be coming all the way from the back of the pack, all the way to the front of the pack very late in the race uh, on a kid who's a top 10 kid in the country. That that sort of shit does not happen, but Ohio State has a whole lot of influence stacked in their favor right now with, like I said, so many teammates around him. But I'm not putting him in the muck. I'm not putting him in the muck. That's not happening. Gotcha. I think I think that's all the players here, Jared. Um, I'm just looking through real quick, see if there's anybody else we missed. Yeah, no, that's everyone. Yeah, that's everybody. So, yeah, uh, I'll just I'll just run through these again. Super, not a five star kicker. Nope, not 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 in 2023. Um, cornerback K and Lee, safety Jaden Bosno, uh, Bos Bon Sue. Uh, Caleb Downs, safety, Averill Reese. Um, there's no, it's Arvell Reese. I, guys, I, I promise I don't, 
I don't mean to suck this bad at names. Uh, linebacker from Ohio, uh, Darren Reed, defensive tackle from Georgia, Tackett Curtis, linebacker from Louisiana, Olas, Olayan, um, Alayan, Alayan. Um, offensive tackle uh, currently in Windsor, Connecticut, but uh, via Finland, the uh, little brother of the Clemson quarterback, uh, Matteo Uyunglele, uh, who is a defensive end, John Walker, uh, defensive tackle, Brock Glenn, um, almost kind of holding a spot for a quarterback in the mock. Um, not a whole lot of confidence on that one, but he's a quarterback out of Tennessee. Um, Jermaine Matthews, uh, talked about him recently, cornerback from Cincinnati and Troy Bowles, linebacker from Florida, who Kyle just told me Kerlick is, uh, leaning towards, uh, sending him to Georgia. So, okay. M maybe, <laughs> maybe, um, how do we ever catch up to Notre Dame? Don't worry about it. Recruiting rankings. And, and I know you're kidding. I, I know, but like recruiting, hold on. I'm going to look this up. I'm going to look this up. I wonder where on earth Notre Dame, Notre Dame is four points ahead with two more recruits. I, 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 I just looked it up. You, who wants to guess it's who fine. wants to guess where Alabama is currently ranked in the 2023 recruiting class rankings? Uh, they're going to be much higher than where they're at right now. Probably. Uh, 56, uh, not that bad gangland, not, 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 not 56 bad. Yeah. Because they just, as we're, as we're talking here, they just, and to nobody's surprise, they landed a, um, five star defensive back from it, from an, in, from Alabama. So they got an in-state five star recruit. Yeah. So I'm including him in this. No, wherever I'm, I'm they're including... at. I'm including him in this rank. I think that's why Gangland said 56, because think, I think that's where he was before that happened. 35. Alabama's currently ranked. Oh, it was just a guess. Um, oh, I, I take that back. No, well, he is yeah. not currently included in nope. this. It's not. Yeah, he'll, he's going to be jumping up to my guess. So well, as of right now, it says 35. It's going to jump up. Probably, but, but this proves... They'd probably be up to about 25-ish with uh, seven recruits. But this this just goes to prove my point that this doesn't matter. Because whether Bama had been 56th or 35th or 15th, you bet your ass that they're going to finish in the top five. And by the way, if they came in fifth, that would be a huge failure for them. Uh, take take a look, take a look at who's currently in the top ten. Penn State, Arkansas, Texas Tech, Cincinnati, Northwestern. You think any of those teams are going to be in the final top ten? Odd uh, spoiler, they're not. So Notre Dame can be all fucking happy about how they're number one in the recruiting rankings right now. All they want it's. It's June. No one cares. Yep. All right. Anything else, Jared? I, I think that that wraps up our um our mock for the month of June. And as a as a bonus for those who want to get more information about recruiting and even sneak peek about our um our mock draft and uh, more information about the our recruiting information. Come join us in the Discord and become a Patreon. Absolutely. Uh, come come join the Discord for sure. Uh, Kyle, do we want to tack on any Ask Sloopcast questions before we go? Oh. Become I mean, a Patreon, the whole app. That's right, Austin. <laughs> I, I've stopped trying to... I've stopped trying to correct Kyle on that. I just let him go. <laughs> I'm looking here. Nothing. Uh, we got one here. Who is the who is the player that hasn't reported yet that you are most excited to see in fall camp action? Player that hasn't reported yet. 
Um, is Hero on campus yet? I want to say Hero Canoe's not on campus yet. Uh, I'm looking. No. No, he's not enrolled yet. Yeah. Uh, I, f I feel like that's a... I feel like that's probably a safe bet. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have, yeah, I don't have the list in front of me right now of who is and who isn't, but well, I'm, Hero I'm, was I'm, the first to come to mind. I mean, they're one of their best recruits in terms of rankings. Sony Styles. Yeah, Sonny Styles. Um, I'm just. He, he's a reclassify. I'm just trying to be patient with a kid who realistically should still be in high school. Like I just, Sonny Styles is going to be great at Ohio state. I a hundred percent believe this. I just, I don't want to throw a, a, an enormous amount of hype on top of a, a player who, like I said, should still be in high school. Uh, so yeah. I just, I just want to, I just want to be careful there. That's all. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Um, any other questions you want to tack on here at the end? Oh, that's it. I was just doing a quick refresh here to see if there's any last to last minute news, but no, I think we're good. Uh, that's it for today's episode. As Kyle said, uh, come join the discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. We have a lot of fun over there. We'll talk to you. We'll answer questions like right there in the discord us and our mods and a bunch of other people who are already in the server. If you want to ask questions about recruiting the upcoming schedule, um, literally anything, come join the discord server. We'll, we'll help you out. Wait, wait, why, why is everyone? Hey, waiting me. Oh, you, you just want to do the music request. That's uh, yeah, sure. Did you want to do it too? Anubis, yeah, I can let you do. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, Austin. What do you want? Fixed gear by Snarls. Hell yeah, I love Snarls. We can do that. What did you want, Anubis? I saw them play live once, um, just because they were opening for another band that I was there to see. I don't think it's pronounced that way. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I guess tonight's ending music will be by Snarls. Uh, the name of this song is Fixed Gear. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Snarls. <laughs>